you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite. Welcome low. back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now. The data is in and Fannie Mae is now saying that they expect interest rates to be higher throughout the year. And there are some economists that are now warning that there will be no rate cuts at all for the entire year of 2024. Now, if I'm bullish, to me, that would mean that the economy is doing great, right? Right, guys? Is the economy doing great? Wrong. It is not doing great. And so in this video, we're going to review a couple articles that is basically indicating now that the market is saying, oh, OK, maybe you're right, Jerome Powell. Maybe there will be no rate cuts. Maybe we are going to be higher for longer. And so now we're adjusting to that tone. But I'm also going to show you this. I'm also going to show you that the economy is not great, especially when we look deeper into the labor market and we look deeper into government deficit spending. And if you guys can't do me a favor, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit notification, shoot comments below, helps out the channel. Only though, guys, only if you like the content. If you don't like the content, hit the down arrow. But if you do like the content, I ask, please hit the like button, shoot me a comment. But either way, you guys enjoy the video. We're going to go into a thorough, detailed breakdown of what's going on with the mortgage rates in regards to the economy. First article that we're gonna reference is from National Mortgage News. The title is, Fannie Mae predicts higher interest rates in the latest 2024 outlook. Fannie Mae, or the real mortgage lender, okay, so the real mortgage bank, okay, the biggest one, Fannie Mae is projecting that mortgage rates close out the year at a higher level than what the government-sponsored enterprise had previously predicted, even though it also had a more optimistic view of the overall economy than in prior forecasts. So again, Fannie Mae is saying rates are actually going to be higher. We need them higher for longer. If they're lower, inflation is just going to come back. Now, I wonder if they said rates are going to be lower this year because of this. One of the biggest leading recessionary indicators, which is the 10 and the two year inversion. So the 10 year and the two year inversion, we've been inverted for about 20 months. I believe this is either the third or second longest inversion in the history of inversions. So we've been inverted quite a long time. And again, you guys, this is an indicator that pain is coming. But it's not here yet. It's not, re there's no reversion yet. Usually reversion happens, which means this line goes above that black line. And then we shortly after generally enter recession. We're not even over the black line yet, which means there, the pain's not even here. Everything that we have been feeling, the pain, the unaffordability, the unemployment, all of these things, it's just the tip of the iceberg. This isn't the front end of a recession. We haven't even had technically a full-blown recession with any type of unhinged unemployment. This is absolutely bonkers, you guys. But again, they're spending money as if we're already in recession. Let's go back to the article. 30-year fixed rate mortgages will average 6.5% for the current period, but fall to 5.9% by the fourth quarter and by 5.7% for the same period in 2025, the February forecast reads. So they still are saying it's going to be low. I don't think it's going to be that low. How could it be unless we have some type of turmoil? It's January outlook put the 30-year FRM average at 5.8% for the fourth quarter and 5.5% one year from now. So they're basically saying at the end of the year, that's where we're going to have probably significant drops in mortgage rates. So 5.8% would be a significant drop. Now in the past two weeks, mortgage rates have zoomed up 26 basis points, bringing the 30 year fixed rate mortgage to 6.9%. You guys, it's actually in the 7% and it's been in the 7% pretty much all week. Now, the 6.9 is according to Freddie Mac as bond market investors digested the latest news on inflation and how the Federal Reserve would react. The unexpectedly strong fourth quarter of 2023 gross domestic product was 3.3%. Now that drove Fannie Mae to increase its full year outlook to 1.7%, but that is still lower than 2023's 3.1%. Now, when we look at the CME Fed watch tool, we see that there is a, the market is basically saying there's going to be no rate cut in March. But what I want to do is I want to go to December and I want to show you what the market is anticipating now as far as rate cuts. So right now, you guys, the market is only pricing in now 
two to three rate cuts. So basically about 50 to 75 basis points right here is 50 basis points right here is 75 basis points. So not a lot, you guys, the market is starting to adjust to the fact that we need higher interest rates and we need them higher for longer, just like Jerome Powell has been saying. But the market and consumers aren't listening. Instead of people saving money, preparing for a recession, preparing to become winners through this, you know, preparing to become rich through a recession, instead of that, people are just spending as if there's nothing wrong, like there's nothing happening, like there's no quantitative tightening. I mean, we know there's quantity of tightening, right? Like we know that they're trying to slow the government. The Fed is trying to slow down and crash the economy. They won't say it, but you know they're doing that, right? Comment below. Am I, am I wrong here? Are they not doing quantitative tightening? Well, judging from the deficit spending, they're not granted. But anyways, guys, let's get back into the article and see what else they have to say. This goes on. Right now, our base case scenario foresees economic growth decelerating, rates gradually declining, and single-family home sales slowly recovering as construction adds supply. However, if economic growth continues to surprise to the upside, then we believe the risk of mortgage rates remaining higher for longer will also increase increase. Now, this is according to them. Total home sales should increase by 5% this year to just short of 5 million units. I don't think so. Maybe if you count new homes as well, and they are. So adjust, now that's seasonally adjusted. New home sales of 735 units seasonally adjusted represents a 10% rise. So if that 5 million units also includes new homes, okay, I can see that. But there's no way in my mind that we're going to get to 5 million units of existing because again, the unaffordability is just brutal, you guys. Both numbers are higher than January's 3.7 and 7.7 .7 respective predictions. The outlook for the new single family home market is positive, but there are challenges. First American Financial Economist said in a statement on the release, potential home buyers are sensitive to mortgage rate fluctuations and long-term interest rates have risen again in recent weeks in response to stronger than expected economic data. But the thing is, guys, is it's not just interest rates consumers are sensitive to. It's also the prices of houses. It's a combo. It's not just interest rates. Remember that we are in this situation because of the low interest rates and excessive money printing. They needed to stop that at the beginning of 2022, and they didn't. They kept on the printing. We're fighting wars. That money comes back to the U.S. Inflation's out of control. So even though you and I are suffering, the government's still spending like the economy is flourishing and there's no QT. They're, they're spending money like there's no inflation battle going on right now. I mean, this is a huge problem. Comment below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Either way, let's jump back in. Now, this is the median sales price for new homes. And despite what they're saying, y'all, about how great and wonderful new homes are right now, and despite the record highs on their stocks, the value in the prices of new homes has been plummeting since October of 2022, going down as of December over 16% in median sales price. Currently, it's only down from the peak right here. It's down about, I think it's about 13%. Year over year, it's only down 3%. So if you just look at the year over year, it's very misleading. But when you look from this peak right here, new homes are down sharply. And that's without many of the transactions, including seller concessions. Generally, in order to sell qualified mortgages to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you must remove seller concessions from the value of the home you're purchasing. It is a requirement. They're not doing that. You guys, they're not doing that. A lot of them are not doing that. They're not even putting it in the appraisal. There is massive headwinds in the new home niche right now. And most of America has no idea just how top heavy the new home market really is. I mean, the hyper supply is insane right now. The speculation is absolutely insane. Let's jump back into the article. So anyways, guys, when we go back to this article, essentially, you know, what they're saying is this Fannie Mae is saying the economy is stronger than they anticipated. So rates are going to be higher. And when they say stronger than anticipated, what they mean is is nothing has broken yet, so we need to keep doing this. But also what I find is interesting is their projection. So if you guys want to see what their projection is uh, for refinance and purchases, it's all right here. And they compare Fannie Mae with Mortgage Bankers Association. So Mortgage Bankers Association and Fannie Mae, they're pretty close. MBA sees refinances going up 
pretty steadily while it kind of goes up here and then goes back down. Basically, they're saying there's going to be about a little less than $300 billion in transactions for the first quarter of 2024. So this is still, in my opinion, you guys, this is still pretty optimistic of both NBA and Fannie Mae forecasts. Now, when we move on to this article from Market Watch, published in March, this title is No Fed Rate Cuts in 2024 at all, Wall Street economists warn investors. And this is what I've also been saying. There's not going to be any significant cut in interest rates unless there's turmoil or something horrible happening in the economy. They're only going to stimulate the economy if basically, for lack of better words, if there's unhinged unemployment. So if we have unhinged unemployment or some type of credit event happen, yeah, they're going to lower interest rates. But if that doesn't happen, they're going to keep interest rates higher, Inter higher, high, higher, right? They're only 5%, first of all, but I know the values and prices are higher. But relatively, you know, when we look back at history, rates are not that high right now. It's just the prices are so high. So what this is saying is, is expect nothing and you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> well, I expect you guys to empower yourselves and become geniuses at investing in real estate as far as your primary residence. So that's what I expect. Don't disappoint me, guys. And don't disappoint yourself, more importantly. Investors might test that mantra in 2024 if a closely followed Wall Street economist is right about the Federal Reserve and interest rate. Market participants came into 2024 looking for six or more quarter basis point rate cut by the Federal Reserve. They should further revise that all the way down to zero, zero. They're saying there is going to be no rate cuts. The reality is that the U.S. economy is simply not slowing down. But also, you guys, it's the deficit spending. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And also, the full-time job market is slowing down despite what that says. And the Fed pivot was provided a strong tailwind to growth since December. As a result, the Fed will not cut rates this year and rates are going to stay higher for longer. Now, honestly, surface value here, that would support what we just read would support the bear case for a soft landing because a strong economy will thrive during a period of high interest rates. But what do we hear from the bulls? We also hear that, no, they're going to drop rates. They're going to go back down to 2%. They're going to do 300 basis points cuts because they're close to their 2% target. But the reality is, is they're not close to that 2% target. They got down to about 3%, but inflation is going back up again. It's not going down again. They are far from their 2% target. And even if they hit the 2% target, which they're not, but even if they did, that's not grounds to slash interest rates because they know by doing so would create additional inflation. But the thing here is, they're in a really bad situation. Because on one hand, yeah, that could help the bullish narrative. But on the other hand, when we look at deficit spending, and when we really look at the full time jobs in the labor market, things aren't really that great. After all, let me start by showing you guys deficit spending. So, so far, it starts in October of 2023. So from October of 2023 to January only, the deficit spending, which means the government is spending more money than they make, is $531 billion that they don't have that is being pumped back into the economy. $531 billion, you guys, strong economies don't need this right here. You see that massive giant number? That's not signs of a strong economy. And take a look at this chart right here. This is federal deficit trends over time. And this goes all the way back to 2001, which is the last year that we didn't have deficits. So what is that? 23 years ago, 22, 23 years ago, we weren't in deficit. And since then, you guys can see we've been in deficit. But look at here, you guys, in 2009, that's when we hit the great financial crisis, deep recession, right? The deficit spending was $1.42 trillion. So again, the one of the biggest recessions of my life, government deficit spending $1.42 trillion. Right now, you guys, for just 2023, we have exceeded that. In 2023, $1.7 trillion. Why have we spent so much money in 2023 when the economy is doing so great? Why? That is the third from this number. That is the third highest deficit spending in the history of the U.S. And that's in 2023. Y'all think about what I'm saying. They're celebrating 2023, but is the third highest year 
of deficit spending. They are using money. They are spending money as if we are already in deep recession. They're spending money that way. So if they turn on the money printer, naturally, inflation is going to get worse. Inflation is going to get worse because not only are they spending money that way in 2023, they did the same thing in 2022, 2021, and in 2020. You guys, they squeezed the juice out of the orange, which is the consumer. Most consumers are squeezed beyond producing any more juice. They got no more juice. We need prices to go down. We need an affordable life. You guys, just because of one year of lockdowns, one year of lockdowns, you're telling me that all of this is going to change like this because of one year? I don't think so. This is not copacetic. There's something terribly wrong here. Now, that's just deficit spending. Let me show you guys the labor market and let me show you guys full-time jobs versus part-time jobs. Now, this is the household survey. And really what I want to do is show you guys basically from November, which is right here, to December, we lost about 1.5 million full-time jobs. From December to January, we lost about 63,000 full-time jobs. However, if you guys look here, we actually have been increasing part-time jobs. So the part-time job market as of right now is red hot, whereas the full-time job market is not. So again, part-time jobs are growing, whereas full-time jobs are actually plummeting. So I go back to the thing that if the economy was really strong, we wouldn't be seeing the numbers that we're seeing now. So overall, you guys, the Federal Reserve is in a very difficult situation because on one hand, people are suffering right now. There's already a recession going on in real estate. There's already people with massive defaults, massive delinquency, credit card debt is skyrocketing. Consumers can't save any money, but yet they know if they lower rates because of all of the spending, the deficit spending, because of all of the inflation, and they know if they lower rates, it's just going to get worse. So they're stuck. That's why so much is frozen right here. And what I say is, let it be frozen. I don't care. Keep the rates high. Better it be frozen than out of control inflation. But the thing is, guys, is this has been going on so long, it's going to get even worse. The longer that this goes on, the more people get hurt and the bigger problem they have. So more and more people are going to face a bigger and bigger problem until this finally busts. And do me a favor, you guys may disagree with me. Comment below. Let me know what you agree. I'm not an economist. I'm just a normal person who lost everything. And that brings me to my next thing. If you are on the sidelines, if you do want help on learning how to purchase like an investor, but you want to buy your primary residence, go to my description, take my free home buying course. It is designed to help you. And I am paying for that. I do not make money off of that. I pay money to have that available for you. So I hope you guys are taking advantage of that. Now, other than that, I hope you guys got some new perspective. I hope you understand that you're going to have to date that rate for a long time. You're going to have to marry that rate. In fact, you're going to have to try to get divorced from the rate just to try to be able to refinance, especially if you don't have equity. In other words, you guys just be very careful. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck. And I hope you win.